you both think so. Now it's no secret that early in the gaming industry, several marketing mistakes were made. Not just with video games, but with consoles themselves. Some decisions that can be considered honest mistakes, but some just completely questions the integrity of these developers at the time, and begs the answer to the question, what the hell were they thinking? Now that isn't necessarily the case for the subject of today's video, as we'll be discussing the unreleased console, the Sega Pluto. The Sega Saturn was Sega's first standalone CD-based console, made to compete with the Sony PlayStation and Nintendo 64. The Sega CD does not count, as it was more or less considered an add-on to the Sega Genesis. The Sega Saturn was released during a time when the video game market was still very segregated between regions, as Japan would almost always get the releases months before North America did. The Sega Saturn was released on November of 1994 in Japan and May 1995 in North America. It offered a unique set of launch titles including Virtual Fighter, Panzer Dragoon, and Clockwork Knight just to name a few. Nights in the Dreams is another but unfortunately it wasn't a launch title but still very unique though. Now the Sega Saturn was a very awkward console to say the least, not just in its programming but in its design as well. It was a very plain and stocky design and overall just bulky and boring to look at. Nowadays, it's very common for consoles to get redesigns. As technology improves with time, so does the simplicity of design and efficiency. And that was exactly the case with the Sega Pluto. You see, the Sega Pluto was a revised, redesigned version of the Sega Saturn. The only thing is, no one really knew it existed. That is until April of 2013, when an ex-Sega employee revealed information revolving the Sega Pluto console itself. One of the biggest things about the Sega Pluto was its reduced price. Along with that was a built-in Netlink modem to connect to the internet, which believe it or not was not common back in the 90s. In fact, it would have been one of the first home consoles to include online features from retail. Now unfortunately, the entire history of this mysterious console is wrapped in unanswered questions. Nothing is really known about its development, and it's unclear exactly how far it got into development. What is known is that there were only 6 Sega Pluto prototypes ever built to showcase at E3, of which 4 were destroyed after the showing, and 2 remained within Sega. Now the first surviving Sega Pluto surfaced on the 17th of April of 2013 by the aforementioned Sega employee, which he held onto for about 14 years. The ex-employee broke his silence at the Assembler Games forums, posting pictures and showing the specs. He did confirm that the Pluto was paired with a 28.8 kilobytes per second Netlink connector for web serving and email. He was quoted as saying that it's probably one of the heaviest consoles he's ever held. Now the second known surviving prototype labeled Pluto 02 was discovered when a local collector found a funny looking system at a flea market in Stockton, California. The collector stated he paid $3 for the system after he talked the price down from $5. It wasn't until after he got home and inspected it that he realized what he had in his hands. The collector ended up selling the Pluto prototype at a game gavel auction and ended at $7,600, which proceeded to an eBay auction that ended with $15,500. It is said though that neither sales were ever finalized. I don't know if it was the buyer or the seller that flaked. It is also said that currently it isn't possible to test the prototype's Netlink service as the owner lacks landline to test its functionality. Now most recently, one of the owners of the Sega Pluto came forward, known as Roger Vega. He appeared on the very awesome and popular show on YouTube, The Ben Heck Hacks. He appeared to fix a few issues that were wrong with the Pluto, including a damaged controller port and I believe the CD lids was stuck open and wouldn't close. Either way, I'll put the link in the description if you want to check it out for yourself, which I highly suggest that you do. If you're not familiar with any of Ben Heck's work, this dude is amazing. I've been following him for several years and he's actually the person that the owner of the Nintendo PlayStation entrusted with taking it apart. So he definitely knows what he's doing. 
Now to keep it short, Ben ended up fixing the lid issue by gluing and rigging a spring to the owner's request and fixing the pins in the connector serial port. He was also able to confirm that the Pluto supports RGB, as well as making a few interesting theories as to how he believed the built-in modem would have worked. Perhaps to download games from a particular service. It's all very interesting and you should take a look at the video. What I thought was hilarious from Ben's breakdown is that a few Japanese speakers were able to translate particular stickers on the console's boards that said, what is this in Japanese? Possibly referring to the fact that not even they knew what they were looking at. The console itself just seemed to be put together very quickly and very poorly for this E3 showing. But I guess it doesn't really matter since the consoles were meant to be destroyed afterwards. Now in the end, even though the Sega Pluto was a big improvement on the original Saturn, I honestly feel like Sega would have lost millions on this investment due to the fact that the Saturn just wasn't as good as everyone hoped it would be. The Sony PlayStation was too dominant with all the support it had and was continued to receive. And in my opinion, Sega would have probably backed out of the console wars way before the Dreamcast would have ever came out. And that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching, check out some of our other videos if you like, and don't forget to follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, check out our Patreon if you'd like to support us and bring out some of these videos a little more frequently, or to give us any suggestions for any future videos, and I'll catch you all next time.